Hey everyone, Rick here, and welcome to a little tutorial for the newest set of rules that I've come up with called Shadows and Gold, which is a competitive game of thievery where the goal is to loot the most townsfolk, robbing them blind through this city. So the city comes pre-populated with 36 potential victims of your thievery, all spread throughout the town. Players are going to start at each of these city gates. Right now it's just set up for a two-player game, but, but just by the nature of the game, it can play pretty much any number of people. Uh, and the way this works is there is a thief phase and then a town phase. Now in the thief phase, you can take up to two actions of three possible choices, which include moving, attacking, and robbing. So let's do a little example. Each player is going to place their figure, which in this case, this fine young man, his name is Stephen. This is Stephen the Assassin. And we're just going to put Stephen right here. You just always put your figure adjacent to the inside of the city gate. And we'll do the same with Jake. This is Jacob. He's also an assassin. He's come to a life of crime, unfortunately. And we'll just put him right there. So let's start with Steven in the thief phase. Here are Steven's attributes. The way this works is you have 24 points that you get to split between four attributes. Attack, defense, speed, and health. Steven, just as an example, is pretty average. Just sixes all the way down the line, including his health. As soon as you take wounds equal to your health capacity, that's when you become imprisoned. So we just have this little wounds dial set at six to give us a hint as to what how Steven is doing. So Steven has up to two actions he can take. What does he want to do? Well, first action is to move. Now, since the goal of the game is to loot the most, let's get right into it. There's actually a homeless man right there that has set up camp right inside the city gate. And as his first action, Stephen is going to move. Stephen has a movement of up to six inches. Normally you have a, a tape measure or ruler, but obviously that distance was clearly within six inches. So Stephen uses his first action to move adjacent to the homeless man. And then his second action is going to be to rob him or attempt to rob him without the homeless man knowing. So when you ever, whenever you try to rob someone, you take your speed value, which is six, add it to the roll of a D12. In this case, it is a five, which ends up being an 11. So he has a thief value of 11. Now, it is possible that that homeless vagrant could catch Stephen trying to steal from him. So he, townsfolk, NPCs also have their own stats. In this case, it's a four. So if he can equal or exceed an 11. So with a four, he needs a seven or better to catch Stephen robbing from him. And he does not. Unfortunately, he only rolled a six. So six plus a four is a 10. So Stephen successfully robbed the homeless man. And whenever you successfully rob someone, you roll a D4 to see how much loot they were carrying. And in this case, it is a two. So Stephen just robbed this homeless vagrant and took home, we'll just call him Bucks. He got two bucks out of doing that. Now, uh, your carrying capacity is equal to your defense. What does that mean? Well, if you ever have six loot, in this case, for Steven, you're going to have to stash it before you can go get more. Stashing, it's very simple. You just have to end your turn adjacent to either city gate, doesn't matter which one. And uh, as soon as you end your turn there, you basically get to take any loot that you have, put it over into a pile, and that's stashed frees up your carrying capacity to continue robbing these poor victims of the town. So that was Stephen's first action. He robbed. Whenever you rob someone or kill them for that matter, 
You just flip their figure over just to show they can't be robbed or attacked again. So Steven now has one further action and he wants to keep looting. So let's go ahead and have him move. So Steven, the assassin, is going to move, let's say this was within six inches, adjacent to this poor woman feeding the ducks. Now, that was his second action, so his turn is over. It would be on to Jake's turn. Now, let's say Jake took his turn, and he's finished as well. Then comes the town phase. Now, during the town phase, anyone who is adjacent to a hostile townsfolk or a city guard potentially takes some damage. But in this case, how would... Uh, a townsfolk become hostile, for example, it would be if you attacked them and didn't kill them outright, then they would become hostile. Or if you tried to rob them and failed. If that ever happens, your turn also immediately ends, and you put one of these hostile markers next to the townsfolk, and that would clue you in for this town phase that they could potentially deal some damage. But let's say it is now back over to Steven's turn. He is now going, he has a couple options. He can either, either just try to attack her or he could try to rob her. What's the difference? Well, if you attack someone and don't kill them, then during that town phase, they are hostile. They can attack you back. Robbing them has the potential of a failure to rob. It is kind of just dependent on how you've laid out your stats. In this case, an attack would be a 6 plus a d12, or speed uh, for a robbery would be 6 plus a d12. So Steven doesn't really care whether he attacks or he tries to rob. It's going to be about the same odds of success either way. But he's going to just try to go for another robbery. He was pretty successful that first time. The homeless vagrant didn't catch him, so he's going to try this again. 6 plus a 6 is a 12. So now, did this woman feeding the ducks catch Steven? Again, townsfolk speed is 4. So 4 plus... Seven, we'll say, is 11. No, Stephen got away with another robbery. And what did he come away with this time? Four loot. Are you kidding me? Stephen is robbing this town blind. So there's four more, plus the two he already has. Again, that now reaches him to his max of six, which your defense, again, is your carrying capacity. So... As his second action for the turn, he can move, and let's say he just, let's say this was within six inches, he moves right to the castle gate, ends his turn there, and stashes that loot so it frees him up to go potentially rob someone else. We'll just flip her over, because she's been robbed by Steven the Assassin. What a poor wish. She's just trying to feed the ducks. Anyway, it'd be over to Jake's turn after what he did then. It'd be the town phase. So what happens, what, what are all these guards doing around the village? If you ever end your turn not adjacent to either the city gate or another NPC, if you just end your turn in the middle of a street somewhere, you could potentially be caught sneaking around by the city guard. So how does that work? You take your health value, not your health maximum, but your current health value, and roll a d12. In this case, we have a 17, which is awesome, because then the guards see if they catch you, and they have a 6 plus a d12 as well in this case. So a 6 plus a 9 is only a 15. So, nope, Steven's fine out in the middle of the road. Let's say he failed that roll, though. Then, during that town phase, when he failed that roll, you would take just any, it doesn't matter, any one of the city guard around the wall, just take one of those figures and put it adjacent to the failed assassin. So that way, on the assassin's next turn, they have to attack. I keep calling them assassins and thieves. I keep using that interchangeably. But anyway, on that thief's next turn, he'll have to deal with that guard. And if he doesn't kill him during his turn, during the town phase, that guard can attack him back. 
So that is pretty much everything. I try to lay this out so that there's alleys, different corners, lots of spread out NPCs, you know, potential victims, people up on balconies so the thieves can try to sneak up there and do some looting. But it all, if a thief ever has wounds equal to their health total, that means they have been imprisoned. So you just take your figure off the board, stick it to the side, any loot that you were carrying that was not stashed is lost, and then that stashed total is your final score. Now what that means is, if there's only one player left standing and they have a higher total of loot at that time, then they win the game or that player keeps playing until either they are also imprisoned or then get a higher stashed loot total, and that means they win. So that is Shadows and Gold. Thank you all so much for watching. I do truly appreciate it, and I can't wait to play this with you soon.